Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, we're at, I think what, July 9th, and sometimes your garden can get out of control. So now it's really the time, usually middle of July, is just to start hacking stuff back. For some reason, we have a tendency to want to try and keep everything. I've been talking about that. At some point, cut it back, remove it. This was a uh, mint and lemon balm area that kind of got out of control. I like watching it grow, but you got to cut it back. So that's what I'm really doing today throughout my garden. We'd go away for a few days. I have someone taking care of the garden, but they can't take care of it like you do. So as we walk through, I'll be showing you stuff that needs to be harvested at the end of the video. I'll show you everything that I harvested out of here today. And I'm going to be giving that to family and friends, taking some of it with me. So let's just come in on this side. It's actually pretty early, so hopefully there's no shadow coming in from behind me. Well, I said I was gonna do a harvest video, but I'm not. I'm gonna let people come in and take stuff off the plants. There isn't that much to harvest, and I think these will be fine. I'm not going away for a long time, so I'm just gonna leave them on the plant. But these are the sweet peppers. They're doing really well. Hot peppers over here. These are the sunken containers with the bottoms open. Just all kinds of peppers producing. Those are the facing heavens. And we'll just go down here real quick. Those might be Anaheims, Jalapenos, Poblanos. Everything's doing, you know, well. So happy with that. Gonna leave most of the smaller vegetables on here, even some of the ones that got oversized, and then I'll just harvest them when I get back. Next week, after I get back, we're going to be harvesting peppers. They're doing peppers. We're going to be harvesting potatoes. They're doing really well. Now it's the time to start pulling them out. And I've been actually been reaching in there and taking some potatoes out of there. Peppers up front, doing really well. Be harvesting some of those. These are sweet peppers. Those are bell peppers. Um, those are, I probably won't be able to say it. Well, that's jalapenos. Oh yeah, that looks right. And these are the shishito peppers. Really nice sweet peppers. Really prolific plant. I'll give you the name in case I didn't get it right. But I recommend growing that plant for the sweet peppers. They're absolutely delicious. Eggplant, still struggling a little bit, but nice to see. They should be ready when I get back. The super hots are doing really well. Oh, this is really cool. Well, so here are some containers that I started indoors. Let's see if I can open that without it falling on me. That's probably gonna fall. These are all, I'm gonna hold this up with my head, tomatoes that are growing on their own, growing out of containers just like that. Now the roots of course grew out the bottom into the ground, but there's they're just growing on clay soil. They do get a little bit of water soluble fertilizer when I walk through, but they are just absolutely massive. Now it's not practical. Don't see any real disease on there, but your tomato plants, your vegetable plants, they want to grow. I always say you just have to help them along and you don't have to get so crazy with giving them fertilizer, you know, every five minutes. Um, fluffing up their leaves, you know, pampering them. These plants want to grow. And just keep that in mind if this is your first time gardening or you're just getting started, your plants are going to want to produce. Now this whole space has gotten out of control, so this would be an area, and I guess I'll uh, commit to taking care of this. So at the end of the video I'll show you this space cleaned up. Just get in, start yanking out stuff that you don't want in there. I'll be moving hop vines, taking out weeds, taking off the bird netting. Um, gonna let some friends come over, pick all the blueberries off of here. This can look overwhelming, but just make a go of it. Just get in there, rip out overgrown plants, rip out weeds, you'll feel better, and then that will motivate you to kind of clean it up. And it's doing okay. I mean, look at all those tiny Tim tomatoes. The vertical towers are doing well. I may do a video on this in that series because I'm starting to harvest. Took off a big red tomato out of there. Herb pots, vertical towers, doing really well. I mean the plants look good. 
it's always hard to go away because you know in a couple of days something can happen I'm not always you know maintaining or spraying or doing things in here but you know don't like to go away because no one can take care of a garden like you do or your own garden peppers look good tomato hedge doing well these are pepper plants that are getting spots on them that is a, a problem so I'm probably gonna spray the pepper plant with some antifungal when you're looking at the patterns when you have a spot and a yellow ring around it that's usually an active fungus and you can see brown spot well here's a better one brown spots yellow ring so when I spray this I'm going to see the spotting stop where it's brown it will die the yellow ring will go away there may be holes in the leaves but I want to stop the progression of this fungus on here I don't know which fungus it is but you know I treat them all the same way lots of rain is what's doing it the leaves are falling off because of the rain these are mad hatter sweet peppers are really cool the plant should be okay but that's why I like getting out here and just looking around cherry tomatoes looking sharp and this is kind of what happens you go away if I go away for five days don't treat this in five days a fungal attack can really spread and take over so that's usually key on my list is any time that I go on vacation for more than really say like say three days I get somebody to water the garden and I put out all my sprays before I leave I'll take a quick look at the tomato tunnel I've been moving the tomatoes into the cattle panel as I've been talking about this is still the die-off from when I didn't water them and you notice like the, the leaf that turned yellow they're gonna dry up go away but it's starting to slow down so this should all die off and then everything else should look fine going upward let's see there should be more tomatoes in there be eating those harvesting them and just look at all the cherries over the next two weeks that color should just go right up the tunnel I think it'll be really really cool those are the Rapunzel Juliet's I have been keeping up on kind of well not kind of but pruning the bottom but really tying them up and they are just getting huge they're starting to approach eight feet now here are some Cherokee purples just pulled up smashed that one coming out of there but I'll make some tomato and cucumber salad today you know not the nicest looking fruit they crack all the rain will cause your tomatoes to crack a lot of times when you get downpours we get thunderstorms here all the time now but I'm gonna cut these up into a tomato salad for lunch today cucumbers some onions even though they failed in my garden I'll be using the ones that kind of formed bulbs on them that's nothing to worry about growth is good those are my dwarf tomatoes they should be producing soon and in here I have melons and they're pretty much doing what I want they're gonna get a light water soluble feeding I like to keep the melons fed trellising up going back down letting them kind of go throughout this whole space even though these are I think the sugar baby variety they're not going to get huge I'm gonna to have to support the melons that are just hanging there um, eventually they can get too heavy and they'll just you know break off the plant or, or tear the vine got to trellis up some of these tomatoes but in this space I will actually go in cut out the bottom of the fig tree use some big hedge pruners on my muscadines cut that back I want all of that growing over the tunnel that way and just keep shaping the garden you know you, when you're doing a space like this it's kind of overgrown um, it's small you don't have to be perfect and think about every cut just get in there hack it away you, the worst thing you can do is you make a mistake 
All right, let's go over here, take a look at the corn. The corn area is doing really well, and I told you, or I've talked about, I've been debating on whether or not to cage this in. One whole ear was sheared off. I don't know what did that, but I'm suspecting the crows, uh, they seem to, you know, a murder of crows, seriously, there's about 11, 12 of them, kind of circulate in for a couple of days, and they're gone, and then they come back, and I think they sometimes get into the garden and may really abuse the corn. Maybe last year it wasn't squirrels, maybe it was a bunch of crows. And there you go. So that's the proof. That's why I like looking around. So this was the ear of corn that fell off. I actually ate it. It was really good. And then something got in here and pulled this away. That's usually not a squirrel. That's like a bird or something. So that's pretty much shot. However, you know, if something else wasn't eating it, you can eat these tender ears of corn. They're really, really good. So, year two, it's clear this has to be caged up. Um, probably won't do it this year, but winter project. There'll be a cage put in here. I may move my corn to another location. That's why I wasn't crazy about building the cage, thinking about where I want it to go. It grows really well. I probably want more corn than a four by four. So before I built the cage, I wanted to see what animals did to it and really decide where I want the permanent cage to go, if that makes sense. Pulled out all the peas. You saw that, I think, in the last video. Dropped in pole beans, yard-long beans, more cucumbers. Cleared out this whole space. Feels good, nice and open, nice and airy. I'll be working on this space when I get back. Not sure what I'm gonna put in there yet. But again, for me, I was pacing how much I put in at once because I didn't wanna to have to tend tons of plants all at the same time. As I said, you can only eat so many squash and zucchini. My heavily pruned squash and zucchini plants are doing really well. They're back, more to harvest. And you can see, you know, they're doing what I want them to do. More tomato plants, getting to size, looking good. Let's go over to the other side now that the sun is out. Fabric pot garden is doing really well. Everything looks green, growing. These guys are still a little bit stunted, but I've been picking peppers off of there. And now that I'm looking around, there may not be that much to harvest. I've really been keeping up on getting cucumbers out, tomatoes out, basil, herbs, carrots, um, turnips and really giving them to people who are eating them. So the garden looks pretty good. I don't think the harvest will be that huge. This space looks good. This is going to stay. You know, this was kind of an experiment, but I like the setup. It's nice and airy in here. Good airflow. The only problem that I've been having was with the cucumber plants back there to the left corner coming out of that 100 gallon container. I don't know why it just seems to be struggling for moisture and it's not treated any differently than the plant right in here. But if you're interested in a fabric pot garden, we sell these at the seed shop. Celery, may do a short video today. This does need to get harvest some of it, but look at the beautiful celery. About 100 to 120 days from transplant. Lots of sun, lots of water, you can grow celery. Collards are doing well. Not a lot of holes, staying up on the spraying, tons of white moths around, or I'm sorry, white butterflies around. Another tomato section. You can see some of the crazy looking tomatoes in there. It's a chocolate stripe that'll get a dark mahogany color. Some of my onions, those are the best ones I got. They should be bigger, but they will go into the cucumber salad today. Bush variety cucumber plant, bottom harvested, lots of cucumbers. And I might be actually doing a short video just showing these cucumber plants off. You've already seen, you know, the work on here. But sometimes um, for new viewers, what I want to do is show the plants that were heavily pruned, link those videos because when you prune, it looks pretty harsh and drastic and people are afraid to prune. But this one was probably pruned, what, back seven days ago? 
10 at the most and it's coming back full force nice and green lots of cucumbers you know and if I didn't prune it it would have just been really covered in here it would have been out to here maybe it would be okay but that just gives disease and pests more opportunity to take hold of your plant prune out the bottom let the air flow they don't mind it green beans going crazy this is okra if you don't know what okra looks like and it's starting oh well, there you go this is when you pick it that's a little bit too big you want to get these at like two to three inches they'll be nice and tender but now that this has started okra will be rolling in pretty quickly and they have beautiful flowers too that was a red okra that's a green okra and this is a nice morning view of the garden the sunflowers are all starting to open the plants are tall even though I'm not going to get a lot of corn from there I think it looks wonderful and this is just a space I like to walk through kind of feed your mind and your soul and all that feed yourself of course but the garden is so much more than just producing food at least in my opinion acorn squash letting a couple of these run out this way I want to see what the plant does been trellising them up the butternut squash looking really good pruned on the bottom they're all coming back one two three four butternut squash in there the acorns haven't started yet but they're starting to flower and you want your leaves to be facing upward just like that so you can prune out the stuff that's overlapping I don't know days ago I lifted up some of these vines I have to get in there remove those leaves and don't put a lot of pressure on yourself like you can't be pruning 24 7 maintaining 24 7 sometimes you just kind of set the plant up if you get to the pruning in time that's good if not they survive you can have all those leaves packed in there it's not hurting the plant but I'm gonna try and get to that today Japanese beetles not much you can do for them I have the uh, beetle trap bags around but all that damage all those holes from Japanese beetles they kind of mate they lay on top of each other obviously <laughs> but they just sit there and they just chew and chew and chew and chew and you'll see them all over if you can get dust to that leaves when they're showing up and that's the best time to dust and kill them just get rid of them this is a cool space now this is taking a little bit longer than I wanted but again only so much time and that's what I want to kind of impress upon you you don't have to do everything you don't have endless time you got a life to take care of be nice if we just had gardens but you know life happens you have to go to work and all that so this space was all asparagus coming down here and in fact this chunk is going to be pulled out too there's another bed but that asparagus will be removed so I have one new bed these are about well these are three feet by five feet right here that was cut from leftover lumber so it's probably like I don't know three and a half feet by five feet anyway I just shaped the boxes to ma to maximize the space in here instead of having a big row of asparagus that I wasn't eating and you can see all the seeds of asparagus fell and are coming up they'll be given away to people I decided to put these beds in now what am I going to do with them well my onions will walk out the other end to end the video my onions have been failing where I've been trying to grow them because of um, wire worms and some other problems I think with the soil try treating it with beneficial nematodes it helps some but I want just a root crop area so beets turnips onions are all going to go into this space and right over in there and it'll be nice and bright asparagus is gone and I've just added all this usable space to my garden where I'll have the carrots and stuff like that all right here I was growing the root crops in here I pulled out the carrots pulled out the turnips have some beets going have some beets over there but they're all going to get shifted into here some kohlrabi maybe I'll use this space too but I'm going to try and keep all the root crops saying that we're now for the ninth time all right in this space so don't be afraid to redesign your garden you know I maximized this empty space you can put a one two three four five six seven nine ten twenty thirty forty 
least 40 beats into here, if not more. So and I'll fill this over the weeks, I'll show you how I do that. Get this ready for the cool, cooler season crops. Um, the beets and all that can kind of sometimes manage pretty well. But I'll get these planted in August. It'll give me August, September, 60 days of great growth. Growth in October when the frost is rolling in. We'll see what happens. I was going to do another setup like this right here and have more winter squash. But having that winter squash grow into my fence, into my compost, that was kind of messy. And I mean, look at all the growth here. That's, I think, two butternut here, two acorn here. I don't really need more than that. So if I was going to duplicate this, it would look cool. But then I have all this to manage. Um, how many butternut squashes am I going to be able to eat, acorn and all that? So root crops, a whole new space in my garden. So I'm looking forward to that. And that's kind of fun. These were struggling peppers that, you know, I just kept up on giving them the water soluble feedings. And they look beautiful. Banana peppers. The simplest pepper probably to grow if you're a first time gardener. 10 gallon container. Put them really closely together in your garden space. You'll get tons of sweet peppers. Looking pretty good. Heavily pruned. Starting to flower. That's a baby female flower right there on the right. Those are male flowers on the left. Looks like they're going to open at the same time. Which means I'll end up you know, with another zucchini. Here is some die-off I wanted to show you. That was because it got really hot, didn't get to watering. That's from no pollination. The leaves drooped, were being beat by, beat down on by 95 degree days, hot sun. And this, and this is because I just missed watering this on time really hot day and these leaves are just going to die off so i can remove them no rush i mean they're not going to hurt anything and as some more leaves start growing you know i'll take those off and the other reason those are squash bug eggs i like walking around in the morning so i'll be removing those tomatillos people were asking me a lot of questions two plants in there. They grow crazy like tomatoes. I've been lifting these up, tying them up. Great production. Probably be approaching a hundred of these tomatillos on two plants. Flea beetles like these, you do have to dust them. It's the only way to kill off the flea beetle in my opinion. Just to show you how the garden's looking from this angle. This is the side we usually walk in first for Friday morning ramblings. This is where the onions were. I pulled everything out, got a ladder in for a trellis, growing beans up there. So here are the onions, and you know, they're kind of pathetic looking. They're just kind of curing out here. I'm gonna use these in that salad today. But who wants to grow onions for 90 days and end up with something like that? So rather than go for a third round here where they're not working, third year, they're gonna go over to those new beds that I'm building. and. Just a tip, if you want to save some money, stop at Lowe's, Home Depot, ask for damaged bags, that's what I'm going to be doing, and just filling those beds at at least a 50% discount. And sometimes you can get pretty good, um, well, for those kinds of places, pretty good uh, fill soil potting mix um, for your beds. We have a deer family that moved in, so I had to put up more fencing, keep those tomatoes from getting chewed down. Um, the tomatoes over here, right there they should be as tall as those t-posts but they do like those tomatoes they're not going into the garden but they do poke their head in chew them down but what can you do so getting ready for the second half of the season opening up space getting in green beans you know second wave of green beans you saw the first wave is like 12 feet tall you don't want to plant everything at once think about the summer as first round, second round, third round, and this way you get a continued production over the whole season. And I've talked before too, sometimes you put in your first rounds of cukes and zooks and beans, disease hits them, it gets too hot, then it starts cooling off, those diseases go away, those pests go away, and your second planting does much better. Take notes, because every garden isn't really set up to be you know, all spring cool weather crops go in on April 1st. All warm weather crops go on May 1st. All fall crops go in August 1st. That's nice on paper, 
but you can keep planting month to month to month depending on the different varieties, um, the zone that you're in or the temperatures that you get in your gardens, how long it is before your first frost, and you can keep the garden going. Sweet potatoes doing really well. Pepper plants in front, I like just showing them off. They're doing well. I don't know if there's any peppers on there. Well, yeah, they're starting. You know, you can combine, you know, plants that you wouldn't think of. So, sweet potatoes in the back, peppers up front. The sun is all behind me, so I get the majority of the sun. That's the, stra the strategy with this, as these peppers are getting hit with the sun, and they're not going to be blocked off by the tall sweet potatoes, because the sun tracks from there back around this way. Things are looking pretty good. So I'm gonna to get to uh, cleaning out that section, show that to you in the harvest, and we'll finish up. Well, okay, I said I was gonna take care of this space, and I did to an extent. And my tip really is, instead of saying, I'm gonna fix everything in here perfectly, give yourself a time limit. So I said for 45 minutes, let me get in here, weed stuff out. And this is everything I pulled out. That is a really good start. And I'm satisfied with that. Maybe I'll move this to composting. Maybe I'll get it next week when I come back or something like that. But a lot has been removed. The sunlight's coming in, hitting the blueberries. And this is probably why I was hesitating. So much loss. These plants are so small along here. So much breakage from the cicadas. I don't know if they're all going to survive. They should look at worst, something like this. There are blueberries on there, but the branches are so fragile, if you tug on them too hard, it breaks the branches. I may just let them fall off, but everything should look like that plant. That's how it should look. Not going to. And the good news is I'm getting really big handfuls of blueberries and they're absolutely delicious. But even the weight of the blueberries where the cicadas cut into the branches, it's breaking the branches. So I have to be even extra cautious tugging on these branches at all. I may just let a lot of the blueberries fall to the ground because I don't want to break any more branches. Hopefully they heal. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get miracle Grow acidic water-soluble fertilizer because blueberries like more acidity. And I'm going to water-soluble the heck out of these plants, get them growing leaves again, really get them in shape so hopefully they recover for next year. And that's when I would use the chemical fertilizers. This is an emergency to me. I lost this entire hedge over here of blueberries. Chemical fertilizers aren't going to damage my soil. It's not going to hurt the plants, not going to hurt you if I just use them to make to help these plants recover. Then I'll go back to my organic ways. Nothing wrong with doing that. So, looks better. Probably why I didn't want to remove everything. I didn't want to see the damage, but that's the way it is. Thanks for watching, and remember, break your gardening tasks into time frames. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Don't say I'm going to build an entire, you know, tomato hedge. You'll burn yourself out. Just put in 15 minutes here and there you'll get those tasks under control. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.